So we decided to take on what we perceived would be an easy win, <laughs> which turns out is a lot harder than we thought again. So we got we got slapped pretty hard on the handlebar notion, but yeah, we teamed up um, with Giacomo from 77 Designs. He came over and sat in the factory and he told us about this plan he had for this you know sleeve idea handlebar and he showed us his stem and he wanted to know if we wanted to make the carbon part. So um, I think we had ideas, but without Giacomo's prodding, I don't think that would have uh, been as fast as we, we did it. Um, so thanks to him for coming to the table and, and kind of forcing that hand for us. But uh, yeah, we took the design um, from him. Uh, we made a few changes. Uh, we came up with the, the locking nipple on the, on the actual sleeve so that it wasn't like a rotational sleeve. It was actually clamped in place. Um, we alleviated a, a big problem where we have stem to carbon interface on that. Um, so the design was a pretty cool, but you still gotta make the bloody thing. Um, and a handlebar is easy to make in some senses, but if you want it to not be this stiff, rigid, unforgiving piece of carbon in your hands and still have it be strong, uh, that's a whole other ball of wax. The architecture of the bar kind of had a bit of weird oddities um, that posed some problems with the laminate. And those were learning curves, the tubular structure, the overall strength of the tube, how the fibers react in that manner, um, how challenging it was to, to make one and then scale that. You're putting people's lives in your hands. That they're grabbing your product and going, I trust you. There's a, there's a, lot, of, uh, there's a lot of responsibility in that and uh, we don't want to make it um, any other way but perfect. So um, you really got to pay attention to what you do there. After our launch in June, that's when I decided to make a business plan. <laughs> Not before the business, but then, right? We need to do some direction here, or figure out some direction here. So, uh, believe it or not, the bike project was in our fourth, or sorry, our fifth year of our, our five-year plan. So all along, um, everyone that's worked here and has been here since day one knew that that project was coming. Um, we're in our fourth year now, and we're a year in advance of where we we had planned, so that's a great uh, milestone for us, but uh, it, it was dumb luck, uh, to be honest with you. Requested a set of rims from a guy named Vlad Yordanov. No idea who this guy is. He just calls me out of the blue. He says he's built his own carbon downhill bike, and uh, he wants a set of rims for it. Likes what we do. Um, he was going to take it to Morsey. Thought nothing of it. Sure, sent the rims out, you know, and then like three months after we sent it out, we we're just, you know, head down working as normal. Uh, this bike pops up and everyone's like, did you see that thing? It's got our wheels on it. Like, yeah, that looks pretty damn good. So then he's like, oh, that's Vlad's bike. Oh. And then they did an interview with him and did an expose on what he did. And it's like, this guy actually made this thing. So he's got knowledge. He's made a beautiful bike. This guy is now in my on my radar big time. So I reach out to Vlad right away and I'm like, hey, what's your plans? You know, what are you doing? He's like, yeah, I don't have any plans and you know whatever. So I said, we should we should think about making a bike. Uh, my plan is to make a bike and you clearly have some skills that we could use and we could collaborate and you know come to Kamloops and let's make this happen. There's a lot of banter back and forth for about six months and I think I finally just said after we had launched our new Revolution wheel set, um, I said, hey, this is done, I have nothing to do. Let's do this now. And I was more forceful about it. This is dead over here. And uh, he basically said, well, I'm wrapping up a project doing a jet ski for a company over there. It was a carbon jet ski that he was working on. And I said, fine, finish that, let's go. And he agreed. So we started that project August 2019, the day he showed up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I knew I was going to do this. I knew I was going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, fuck dude, it's so hard. It really is. So many peaks and valleys along the way, it's crazy. Like, one moment you think you're there, the next minute you're not. It's, it's day to day. It's day to day for two years and keep 
driving and driving and then have your team be there with you the whole way is uh, that's the crowning achievement of all of this. Is it, if it wasn't for everyone involved, it wouldn't have happened. So, yeah. Super proud. It's like, it's like a son. <laughs> that's what it feels like. It's like, I get to show my baby to everybody. I never thought a bike would bring you to tears, but it does. <laughs> like entering the bike market is, is difficult today. I'm not going to shit on anyone's designs with this comment, but you know, if you looked 15 years ago what entering the bike market looks like, and then you look at that, we have zero ability not to be on on every aspect as far as the product goes. Um, so we had to approach it like that. We had to come out guns blazing and have it be perfect or else it would never be successful. Before I moved here I was a lead engineer at Rolls Royce Aerospace and uh, worked in aerospace my entire career. I'm predominantly the test engineer and um, I also do a lot of the, the safety work on site um, but we're obviously you know, primed to do the, the framework at the moment and um, we want to find the faults in the design and you know, we've extrapolated and we've, um, we've reiterated a few of the, um, the design concerns that we've had and that have shown up as being you know, deficiencies that um, the testing has shown. But now we've got huge confidence in the, in the design and the capability of the, of the framework. I couldn't imagine we get this bike to the market and chain stays start breaking and you know, head tubes are falling off and all this shit and they're like, oh, we're going to make it right in 2022, no problem, stick with us. I just couldn't do that. If we're going to succeed, I can't say 20% of my product is going to be saved for warranty scrap and I'm going to work the numbers and those numbers are going to be inflated in price to, to account for it. No, the product has to be damn perfect has to be stronger than you could possibly ever make up to this date as far as an industry norm goes and we have to deliver that product at a, the right cost. Who's going to buy a $17,000 mountain bike made in Canada? Sure there's a select few that will but is that what we are ones about? It's not. It's still upsetting to me that we call a $10,000 bike a, a layman's bike but it's as close as we could get right now for bike one. The bike project was funded 100% by our success with the rims. It's paid for the project the entire way on the back of the rims is what's carried. So if we can just get this to market and start driving revenue off of it, we are one, pays more people, pays them better, and we don't need to scale to five, six, seven thousand bikes a year. We're a niche builder. We want to be continuing and, and looked at as a niche builder and we have the target for uh, growth and all of it's achievable but it all begins with design and how do you solve the biggest problem with carbon fiber and that's the labor. We don't solve it by cancelling the labor out and automating it and getting rid of it. We solve it by giving a human the ability to make more in less time and easy. So we're not looking to cancel people out, we're looking to give them more skills to be better, to make it faster, to make it better, to make it accurate. All of that comes into play. And that's, I think, why we're able to get to this price point. If we're gonna make something here, um, we wanna make as much of it here as we can. That's a goal. Um, and there's other people in North America that do make great stuff and a lot of them are actually pretty damn close to us. Um, so we call it our, our, our 500 mile diet um, because at 500 miles it just gets Chris King into that fold. So. <laughs> so, and it sounds cool, but no, if you don't put a term on it, basically we wanted to work with as many North American partners as we could. We wanted to source as many North American raw materials as we could and we wanted to keep as much of it in-house as we can. This project, uh, as you can see, the emotion pouring out, 
uh, has taken a lot its toll. It's this has been a beast. Um, I have made a conscious decision in the last two months to drive up our plan for year five to ten, um, and in that plan, the decision to to slow it down a bit um, is definitely a goal for us. Um, I think that we'll be making small iterations to the bike for little nagging things that might come up down the way if they do um, and we'll address those but as far as future products go uh, it'll be revisions on our rims uh, for sure uh, and we'll look to take this platform and add two additional frame sets to it uh, other than that it'll be continuing to focus on producing a high quality product every single day.